All right, so for this problem, we need to calculate the curl of f, and if f is conservative, find the potential function for it. So the curl is the cross product of the gradient vector and f. And so to find that, we're going to take the, de the determinant of a matrix, um, a 3 by 3 matrix. First row is i, j, and k. The second row is going to be the three partial derivatives, ddx, ddy, and ddz. And the last row is going to be the components of f. Okay, we're going to start um, taking the determinant. Um, we're going to cross out the i-th row and the i-th column and take the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix right there. So that's going to be multiplying across the main diagonal, subtracted by the other diagonal. Okay, the partial derivative of this with respect to y, um, sine z is just a constant, so what we get is just negative sine z. And e to the z doesn't have a y term, so it drops out. Now we subtract um, the derivative of this with respect to z, is just a constant, so that drops out. And the deriv derivative of cosine of z with respect to z is going to be negative sine of z. So we can see that that's just equal to 0. Now for our second term. We're going to look at the jth row and the jth column, cross those out, and take the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. That guy and that guy. So that's ddx times negative y sine z plus e to the z. Minus uh, ddz times sine of y. Okay, the derivative of the first term with respect to x doesn't have an x term, so it goes to 0, and so does e to the z, so that's just 0. And the derivative of sine y with respect to z is also 0, because it doesn't have an z term. So we can see that the second component is also z, 0. Finally, cross out the kth row and the kth column and take the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. So now we have ddx times x cosine y plus cosine z minus ddy sine y.
ddx of this, uh, cosine y is a constant, x drops out, so it becomes cosine of y. And the derivative of sine y with respect to y is cosine y. And that equals 0. So we've got the curl of f. That's the gradient vector times f, uh, cross product with f. And that's 0. So that means that f is conservative. Um, so now we need to find a potential function for f. Um, so the potential function is going to be a function small f for which this is the uh, derivative with respect to x, this is the partial derivative with respect to y, and this is the partial derivative with, respe with respect to z. Uh, so I've written these on the other board. Um, now what we don't want to do, we don't just want to integrate each one of them and then kind of piece them together. Um, there's a much more analytic way to approach this, which will get you the correct answer without any sort of guesswork involved. So first we integrate the first term right here with respect to x. And for that, we get x sine of y plus an unknown function in terms of y and z. Because here we've only integrated with respect to x. We still have to figure out what the y and z terms are. So because we have f here, we can take the derivative of this again uh, with respect to y and see what we get in that case. So again, the, just the derivative of x sine of y is going to be x cosine of y. And the partial derivative of a of yx is going to be dA dx. So here we have an expression for df dy. And here we have um, the j component from our vector field before. Um, so if we set these equal to each other, Um, we realize that the x cosine of y cancel, uh, and we're left with dA dy is equal to cosine of z. Now we're going to integrate this term with respect to y. And that's going to equal uh, we get uh, y cosine of z plus an unknown function of z. OK, now that we have this expression for a, we're going to plug it back into um, the expression that we have for f so far. So So here's what we have for our potential function so far. We still need to find this unknown uh, expression of z. To do that, we're now going to take the potential with respect to z and compare it to what we have up here. So this drops out. 
this becomes negative y sine of z. And this becomes b prime of z, or db dz. Now again, we're going to set it equal to our expression up here. So now if we, can, uh, if we analyze these two, we can see that we can subtract the negative y sine of z from both sides, yet db dz is equal to e to the z. Now if we integrate this, we can find that b is just equal to e to the z plus a constant. So now that we have this expression for b, we can plug that back into our potential function and get our final expression for our potential function. And I'm going to write that here. So there you have it. That's our potential function.